Hey everybody, welcome to YourTrailer.com. I'm Bobby, and today we're taking a look at the Yakima Backroad Ford Bike Rack on our 2016 Mazda CX-9. Now you can see we do have a nice hanging style bike rack with us today, and it does offer a dual arm support system. Why that's great, as you can see, we're not getting a lot of play on our bike going left or right. So this can be a great option if you want to get four bikes to the trails for you, your friends, or potentially your family on the trails with us today. And with seven inch subsets on here, you're going to get a lot of space actually between your bikes. Why that's great with a lot of hanging styles. As you get more bikes on here, you're going to get a lot more sway as we get on there. So the nice seven inch subset going to be doing a great job of keeping our bikes, hopefully from having contact with each other. Now moving at the end of this bike rack, as you can see, we have a couple of features that Yakima likes to throw us. Of course, we have the Yakima favorite bottle opener here in the end, which is going to be nice and ready for you if you want a cold one after your ride. And then on the other side, we do have an integrated bike cable on here, integrated cable lock. You can see just slips right up, goes through this fourth set for your frame and locks the rest of your bikes to your rack. Now, keep in mind with this, however, this can only be utilized if you do have four bikes on here, as you can see. So if you're looking for a way of actually tying down the rest of it, you can also pick up a different cable lock from Yakima through it some other way, or just make sure you're having all four bikes on here when you actually want to lock it. Keep in mind, you might be tempted to go ahead and put just one bike on the very end. However, we definitely recommend do not do that as you will start adding some weight issues to the back end of here. So always make sure you're getting four bikes to actually utilize that cable lock. Moving our way in here, you can see we do have these cradle systems here from Yakima. And they utilize the zip strip technology that Yakima has for these ratcheting straps here. As you can see, just a very simple ratchet system on the sides and on the inside they have a nice little rubber foam padding on the inside so that's going to be great for preventing any kind of damage to the frames of our bikes as we secure them to our bike rack. And at taking a look there as well, you can see we have a very simple cradle here for us. However, I do like how much air is actually in these pockets. Air can be one of the best ways of actually preventing any kind of damage. As you can see, getting a lot of play there. Going to heavily definitely be nice and soft. Not going to have too many issues on our frame. As well with that internal groove, going to be a really good job of actually getting those bike cables to run inside there. That way we're not having those cables run onto our frames. We're not going to have any issues with deterioration that way. Talking about frames, if you are having a carbon frame bike, we are utilizing a hanging style and we do have frame contact. So this will not be a great option, will not be an option if you have a carbon frame as you will actually deteriorate your frame and have it warp as it's sitting on here with that pressure. Now keep in mind, to some of the other issues you might run into if you have any step through bikes, women's bikes, or maybe kiddos bikes, they might have a bit of an issue of getting their frames to actually work on the three point system here. However, a bike adapter bar, which you can pick up at eTrailer.com, can probably solve that solution for you really quick. Moving our way in here, we can see how we can actually take this bike off. As you see, we mentioned before, we just have those zip strip technologies. We just want to push on those levers and pull them right out. Very simple to do. The only thing that gets me with this guy, I'm a pretty forgetful person, so it's kind of hard track. Kind of can be hard to keep track of those guys. Go ahead and stick them in the pocket so we know where they are later down the road and not worrying about where they're at. I'd say that's the only disadvantage I have with these guys, but at the same time, that's going to be user error. Moving our way, you see we have that this also this anti-sway cradle on the back end here. What's this going to be great about? As we mentioned before, as we get more bikes, we are going to get a lot more sway. However, with that seven inch subset and the zip strip technologies on our anti-sway, hopefully we can reduce the damage that our bikes are going to feel when they actually, if they, if they even make contact with each other. So we can see, we can take out this lever here. All we want to do, simply walk ourselves in, press in this lever, start walking that back. You can kind of see we're going to run a little bit of issue with our wheel clearance here. However, this anti-sway cradle just simply walks right right back and then we can continue the process and take that zip strip out. And now the dismount's very easy. Just go ahead and make sure you're securing both sides of your bike and then just nicely walking it out. And that's even where this that anti-sway cradle is very nice to get up and out of the way. We can move it. It's not going to be like hanging right in our way, keeping our bike from getting off. It's going to be very simple to even just tuck this up like so and get it out of the way and we won't have to be worrying about it. Now with any hitch mounted accessory, we are going to add length to our vehicle. So it's important to keep in mind where we are in our CX-9. So I know that we're going to have too many length issues, but let's go ahead and take a quick look at how much length we are adding. Going from the rear of our bumper here, as you can see, to the very end, looks to be about 
43 inches from the back of our vehicle. Now that can be a little lengthy, but keep in mind, we are getting seven inch subsets on each of our bikes here. So, you know, you are definitely adding a little length to the vehicle, but you're getting a nice spread between your bikes. That way we're not doing any kind of damage to our bikes. However, with Yakima, we also have a very easy way of actually shortening down our length. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at how we can do so. So maybe we're at the parking space or the, the trail and now we got the bikes off and we're gonna pull them out. All we have to do, come up to this little trigger lever here, pull that up. I like to make sure I'm just supporting the mast with my other hand, that way it doesn't come crashing down and it makes that tension real easy to take off. And then we just simply walk that back into place. You can see it's got a little bit of play here as it's hanging, but I think we're gonna have too many issues at all. As you can see, definitely not gonna get anywhere close to our vehicle and we're only gonna get about an inch or so of play. Definitely nothing too crazy. So let's go ahead and see how much we actually shaved down on here. And take a look from the rear of the bumper uh, to one of our zip strips is about 10 and a half inches from our bumper. So we really shortened down that length. So yes, we are getting a little length, but this is fully extended. However, maybe now we need to get in the garage where we got those parking places at the trail that we want to get into. We'll be able to do that with much more maneuverability. Another great option with this too, with our CX-9, we do have a lot of cargo that we want to access and with our hatch is kind of in the way right now of our mast, right? Can be a little hard to get out. However, the Yakima has another trick up its sleeve. At the back end here, we just have this simple pull knob. It's got a little plastic tab that you want to make sure is removed from there and then we just simply pull straight up on that tab as you can see kind of remo removing that bolt it's going to go ahead and rest itself on there no more pens to replace very hands-free and then all we have to do is pop open our hatch and again as you can see in the cx9 i'm sure we're all aware of we do have a lot of cargo area so it's gonna be very nice to get in here we can get those coolers maybe we can load up the groceries when we have this on here um, it's definitely not too heavy to take on and off however it's always cumbersome to have to take it on and off all the time so maybe we just have it on there it's gonna be very nice to actually get in here and get what we need without too much trouble now keep in mind as you can probably tell we want to make sure that we are removing those bikes before we utilize that tilt away feature we don't want to utilize you want to be hurting those bikes as we have them on our rack. And to fix it, all we gotta do is walk this mast right up and it'll click right in place as you hear. Now, I like the curved mast on here, as you can see, getting us just enough clearance with that mast to our hatch. We're definitely never gonna have any issues there. Now, another important dimension to keep in mind is our clearance. So since we are in the CX-9, we are a little bit lower down. Now, keep in mind, as those front wheels go up, the back will go down, and so will our hitch-mounted accessory. So, taking a quick look to our clearance here, I see that we're about 11 inches exactly to the bottom of our mast here. So I don't think we're gonna have too many issues, but if you have any very steep driveways or doing any hazardous terrain, be sure to keep that clearance in the back of your mind. Now, moving our way down the shank here, we see we do have an inch and a quarter shank receiver. However, we do have a two inch sleeve adapter that we're utilizing today to use our two inch hitch. And you can see here too, it does come included with an anti-rattle threaded hitch bolt. All that does is as it pulls in our hitch receiver to our hitch, making our system in one with our vehicle, getting us in line with the frame. And you see I'm shaking the whole vehicle as I do it. That's gonna take a lot of the play out of our bike rack. It's going to take the play off of our bike, so we're not going to feel it as much, and we aren't going to feel it driving the vehicle, making for a nice, smooth ride. And at the very end here, too, if you can kind of see, we mentioned that cable lock before. It also comes with a locking core for our bolt here at the end. And what's great about this with the Akama, it, it does utilize the same key system. So these will be key to like, not only to our cable lock, but if you have any other Yakima products, you can get those key to like to that guy as well. So a nice little feature that Yakima always likes to tote. Well, if you're looking for a way of getting four bikes to the trail with you, Yakima always is a great option. I love how easy to use the triggers are, the knobs. There's a lot less pins and stuff to have to worry about, spring clips that are, can be in the way and pinching yourself. Very user-friendly and a great way of getting those bikes to the trail with you. Well, I think that about does it for our look at the Yakima Backroad four bike rack on our 2016, oh, <clears throat> excuse me, 2016 Mazda CX-9. I'm Bobby, thank you for watching. Now we're going to go ahead and take it on our test course. First we'll start with the slaloms. This is going to show the side to side action. It's kind of going to mimic the movements that you'll see whenever you're driving down the road normally.
And now with the fold speed bumps, these are gonna be pretty much like normal speed bumps. You get to see the up and down action of the bike rack and see how it holds up. Now we'll have the alternating speed bumps. This is gonna be more so like the uneven roads and some of that uneven terrain you might be traveling on.